just about the uh, science plans. We have seen this morning what the various the um, programs that we have. Um, these plans, there are four of them, and they, they have evolved over time. The first, we started this program about 2005, uh, and the first publication of these four science plans were, was in 20s, and uh, the magnitude of these things have changed over time. So there was a need for revision, which was started in 2015 and was concluded in 20. 16. So the ones I'm presenting to you, the version I'm presenting to you, are the ones we have uh, as of now and which have been marketed over time. So there are four of them, like I said, the global environmental change, the health and human well-being, the natural, natural and uh, human-induced hazard and disasters. And when we are talking about this, you remember Mozambique and uh, what's the other one? Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe. And then we have uh, sustainable energy. You will see that during the keynote uh, address, most of these things were addressed. So, but because I have 20 minutes, uh, you will have this, this presentation eventually. But because I have 20 minutes, I'll just gloss over them bit by bit so that you will be able to uh, have a feel and see as a community of science, scientists where you yourself or your organization fits into it okay so um, for the uh, global environmental change and jack uh, is going to talk about this extensively in the next presentation and by the way i follow into the senegalese academy of sciences has been brokered by one of members of the uh the regional Committee for Africa, and that's Jack, a, a, a very able member, and has been the going between uh, us and uh, the academy. So we have this. If you look at this, this are uh, we're talking about the type of things that are changing. If you ask a common man, the common man is going to tell you um, the type of rain that we used to have about 20 years ago is not the type of rain we're having now. The suns are getting worse, uh, and so on and so forth. So. When you look at this, we are looking at these various activities, research activities, when we talk about global environmental change, land degradation, biodiversity. This hotel, about 1992 or three, when I came here for the uh, cadastra activity, I could see what this hotel is now and what it was then. And I can tell you that this sea was not, not as close to this hotel as it was, as it is now. So, a lot of things are changing. So, when we talk about degradation, it's both on land and on sea. So, we have biodiversity laws and so on. Climate systems, food and nutrition, and uh, you see that the keynote address talked about food, agriculture, and all the rest of it. Water resources, urbanization, and atmosphere, and, and this. So, these are some of the issues that we are, we are dealing with. I'm not going to go through these key issues uh, for each of these, but I would like to just talk about this food and nutrition system. All of us have taken something this morning. And usually when you have a conference, there's always what they call the health break. Why is it called health break? It used to just be called break uh, at that time for you to go to the bathroom and come back. Now it is called health break. Uh, and it is not for fun that it's called health break. Because some of us, either you did not, you forgot to take uh, breakfast before you come in, and so that you do not doze or you do not fall down, uh, we have this health break. So the, all of these issues, food and nutrition, and the type of food that they give you are the ones that will sort of energize you in doing your duty. So look at these ones, and within the context of this, when you get it eventually, please see where you can contextualize yourself, where you can go into this and join uh, in this. Water resources, most of the countries in Africa, especially in West Africa, north of the, the, uh, so you will see that many of them are water scarce now. And uh, you will see one of the things that is impacting us is very, very much of urbanization. And with urbanization, urbanization is an asset, but it can also be a nuisance uh, if, if it's not well managed. And that's why we're having this atmospheric pollution. Now, ocean, 
most of the major cities that we have around the world, not only in Africa, are on the coast. How have they been impacted now as well? So you, you look at it. Fisheries and coast. Um, a whale was captured. Uh, is it last last week? Shortly before I came, and he died and, and beat himself. And what did they find inside it? Garbage of um, uh, plastic inside the whale, and that's what killed the whale. And that is why we are we are we are impacting the environment. Now that that literally takes us to the various seven items of, that we want to look at in this atmospheric, I mean, this global environmental change. The world is changing, and we must change with it. Otherwise, we'll be left behind. All right? So, and we don't want to be left behind in Africa. You see, the, the, something said, um, Africa is the next stage. You know when development started? Greece, Britain, and so on, in the north. They then went to America, and by the time they left America, they jumped over Africa. And went to Asia. Now the keynote speaker is saying that Africa is the next. Now that is our own time, and we are not going to repeat all the mistakes in the past. <laughs> but unfortunately, history doesn't teach anybody anything. So, the, so it seems. Now, but we must learn from it. Now, health and human well-being is another is one is a, uh, one of our signs of the four science plans. And when we talk about health and human well-being, there are certain research themes that we want to look at here. Understanding the scientific basis of diseases in Africa, health promotion and disease prevention, health system analysis. All of us that are seated here, um, pardon me for saying it, all of us have different types of diseases that are afflicting us. Huh? You will see somebody who will go to the toilet ten times before we leave here. You see somebody who will go once. You will see somebody who has to take about five or ten tablets or whatever in different categories. You will see who will not take anything. So. If we look at it, we have to understand your own nature, and so you understand the health needs. So we need to look at what promotes health and what prevents diseases, this type of thing. And when you do that, you want to analyze it and so on. One important thing that is uh, taking place in all the International Science Council regions is this traditional complementary and alternative medicine. For those who have been to uh, Japan, and especially China, a, 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 um, a room as big as this will have one quarter of it for what they call Western medicine. Three quarter of it is what? Traditional medicine in China. In Africa, we have all of these things, but we think it is not modern. What, who determines what is modern? Who, who says it is not modern? If my forefathers have been using it with beneficial results, why can I not use it? If we have all the knowledge to modernize it, don't do whatever name, whatever, quote and unquote, modern, modernize it and let us sell it. That is what is happening. And from experience, we found that the Latin American uh, office, the Asia Pacific office, and the African, uh, African office, we are very, very much interested in this traditional complementary and what we call alternative medicine. So it is, it is important for us uh, to note our, 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 so don't let us lose what we have and what we inherited. It is our heritage and we must use it to good purpose. So these are the type of things that for each of these major issues, these are the various things we want to, we want to take a look at it, but we do not have time to look at it again and repeat. Once you, have, once you have all of this, please try and look at it and see where you can come in into this research uh, elements. Okay? Um, just in case you have anything, just uh, contact the regional office and they'll tell you which of these working groups you can be uh, to uh, ex enjoy yourself and enjoy your research and so on. So it's, it's a very detailed type of thing. So please take advantage of it. Uh, uh, in the case of traditional complementary alternative medicine, look at it. We're talking about scientific uh, uh, validation. Why? Why scientific uh, validation? Because you want to know. It is assumed that if you have headache, and there is a traditional medicine for headache, the dosage of that headache determines the severity of your headache. Right? Which is wrong. Uh, it, I mean, the, the most modern one would say, take two tablets, morning, afternoon, evening. In our situation, my mother would just give me a cup. She said, how, how heavy is this headache? And I said, say, okay, take another cup. That is, the bigger the cup, the, it is thought that the faster, the, the more of it I take, the faster the headache will go. But we know that is not so. That's why we have 
we need this scientific validation and uh, using the, what we have to find out a lot of uh, uh, discovery within that. Uh, now look at this documentation of indigenous knowledge, meaning that we have to gather and catalog information about our traditional healers. They may not have gone to school, but they know what they are talking about. Okay? And because they know what they are talking about, we must respect them. Alright? It is not their fault that they didn't go to school, but that doesn't mean that you are more knowledgeable than them. Alright? And so we must take advantage of what we have. And so we want to collate, we want to classify, and we want to catalog the uses of these medicinal plants for the overall benefit of everybody. Okay? Uh, we've talked about agriculture and all the rest of it. Now, okay, let me mention this. Now, because of the circumstances we are seeing in urban areas, as one of the things that the organization has brought, look at the situation of mental health. I'm not sure whether it's happening in Senegal, but in many other countries, the level, the number of so-called mad people, that's derogatively said. But we said mentally challenged. Okay? The number is rising. Now, why is it rising? What are the causes? And what can we do? Must we say because they are just out of their mind, jettisoning them? Remember, they are members of this community or of our communities. And so, look at it. We want to look at them, how aside the impact of changing economic, social, political, and cultural environments on the evolution of mental well-being. Okay? That does not mean that we do not have those who are mentally challenged in the past. But their circumstances are different. Can we now understand them better? And that's why we want to investigate their mental conditions and what is resulting, I mean, what, what is causing them. Okay? So, uh, we have all of these two. Now, the third one. It's natural and human in these hazards and disasters. This is occurring with more veracity uh, now than we have in the past. And uh, so this, this is being looked at uh, in the various ways. Uh, we'll start from the basic ones, or what we call the, 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 the science-based one, geohazard research. And this, this particular uh, group had uh, even prepared what we call research proposal and they said they want to look at assessing and mitigating earthquake risk. We are lucky in Africa that the incident of earthquakes and so on is not common. Okay? Uh, but you go to Japan, you go to Asia Pacific, and, and we have different, different stories. But we have some active uh, volcanic uh, activities uh, uh, in, in, in Africa too, and we should look at that. Okay? We want to look at hazards arising from Volcanoes and explosive crater crater leaks. Where we were in El Salvador last year, they took us to one volcano, I mean, um, or a crater, and you can imagine how vast this 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 area is. Now, if in Africa we have very few of it, the few that we have, there are some. Mount Cameroon is very active, and and some other ones. So, how, what do we do when it happens? Okay. And that's the essence of uh, interdisciplinary research, multidisciplinary research. You're looking at this in a scientific way, but what are the uh, social consequences, economic consequences, mental consequences of, of this type of thing? Look at what is happening in Mozambique and uh, something now. Something you just cleared the whole house. I'm uh, talking about 100,000 people. They cannot. They cannot. Uh, 100,000 people is not. It's not a small number, huh? But how how do they? Somebody who is trying to make a life make a living. His livelihood is destroyed, his house is destroyed, everything is destroyed. How will he not go mad under that circumstance? So that's, that's the type of thing that we have uh, here. And so we want to look at what are the mitigation uh, methods of landslides and so on. Again, we are relatively lucky in Africa. Uh, you know, we, we have some hills. I imagine a whole hill just finishing like that and just sliding down. Uh, and finishing everybody. This, this is, this. but we need to take care and Make sure that we understand what is happening here. Then we talk about coastal hazards and pollution. Look at coastal hazards. If you just go down, I mean, the one I saw here is not as polluted as I see, but just look at the news. You will see the type of plastics that we're talking about, things that you will not, even in that, in that, in that beach, you will not want to swim. Okay? So that, those are the activities. And then we draw drought and desertification. Many countries in uh, uh, in uh, West Africa, north of it, you see that this is what we are dealing with. So, how do we handle it? All right. So, these are these are some of the things that we need to to look at. So, we are like I said, working groups. 
Look, we are having various working groups, and this is what we are looking at. We even went to budgeting to see where do you get funding for this type of thing. This is what you see. Okay? So, uh, the last one I want to talk about is the uh, energy. One of the major problems that we have in Africa is energy. But the resources that we have in the Democratic Republic of Congo is more than enough to power the whole of Africa and export. Yet, it is lying in waste, it is lying in ruin. Okay? That's where the political uh, angle of it comes in. But here, without energy, you, you, how, what, can you, what can you do? And yet we have major, major problems with energy in Africa. Uh, so we are thinking here for, for this, for this uh, 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 um, science plan, we want to develop energy models and scenarios for Africa. We want to see how we can have access to high quality, reliable and affordable energy. Okay, and then we want to strengthen and retain and retention of human residual capacities in this particular area. And then we have uh, uh, different activities that will go that will go with it. And then uh, what, how, how we will uh, uh, contextualize this. Okay, so here what we are trying to uh, work on is to ensure that in bringing in the type of energy that we're talking about, it should be affordable. Available and affordable. The fact that it's available does not mean it can be affordable. Okay? Uh, there are some countries that have been very, very good at this in terms of stability. Uh, here now, since we started, the electricity has not gone off uh, in my country without being uh, rude or whatever. It will have gone, probably gone about three or four times and come back. Um, this, this is not, there's no development that can, can be sustained under that, under, that, under that system. And those that have that level of, of stability in energy are having challenges now. Okay, so how do we, how do we handle, handle that? So do we want to look at a way of strengthening and retention of these human and institutional capacities. Many times we're talking about capacity development, but honestly, Honestly, in my own opinion, and based on my experience, Africa has a large, large reserve of this. Unfortunately, many of these people are in the, in the so-called developed country now. Why? Because their country does not, do not appreciate them, okay, and so cannot utilize them, or do not have the material within there they are going to work with. Imagine a country, like my country, where we have scarcity of medical personnel, all right, and yet, a substantial number of medical personnel are outside, trained by the country, now exported out. This is essentially what is happening here. Okay? We've seen situations where, uh, you know, when, when the president of America came up, he said he was going to export mostly uh, African, African uh, nationals out of, his, out of his country, until he found that these African personnel, African individuals, are holding key positions in industry, in energy, in everything that. And that's why he kept his mouth shut. And yet we in Africa, we, 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 do not, we do not have this. So these are issues that we as scientists should be able to work with and should be able to contribute our, 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 our um, uh, own quota in there. We, we, we see where we want to, the, how we want to implement that. So uh, we want to identify gaps and so on. All of this, please take time to look, take time to look at this and put in your, your, your own uh, where is it, do I say application or interest? And then contact the regional office in this, and then we we'll know that we will be able to, to work together. For science plan, things are evolving. Don't be left behind. And if you don't, um, what is the name of this? Not in my backyard. Hmm? Not in my backyard. But it will not be in your backyard if you are vig vigilant. If you are not vigilant, it's not only going to be in your backyard, it's going to be in your front yard. So let us work as hard as possible so that we can move. Thank you very much. Thank you.